Merry Christmas and welcome to St. Patrick's. Christmas is about celebrating the peace, joy and love made manifest in God's gift to the world. Light always overcomes darkness. Due to the risks of spreading the coronavirus and honouring the public health professional's advice, we are celebrating Christmas online this year. As always, the good of our neighbours is of utmost importance to us. And so please do follow along with our candlelight service. Please download the programme from our website, stpatrickschurchdc.org. And now please stand and join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also join him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders The rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than our God. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. O the majesty and magnificence of his presence, O the power of his wonder and sanctuary, 
Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Bring offerings and come into his court. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell out of the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so far that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, 
and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. I mean, Isaiah's prophecy that I just read, written hundreds of years before Jesus' birth, points Christians to the celebration of light overcoming darkness. That is what this Christmas celebration is all about. It happens by chance in a time of year here in the Northern Hemisphere when the sunlight is shortest and when we are most in need of light. From a theological perspective, Christmas is celebrating the coming of God into our world in human form to save us, to instill hope and joy and love. And we really do need God's light. We really do need Jesus, and we need him more than usual this year. Let's just say, I think that we can agree, that it it might be easy to assume that darkness has won 2020. But in the long view, light always prevails. It prevails because we turn toward God, that collective energy that unites us together on a mission of justice. God, through light, through the gift of Jesus, raises up the lowly and straightens the path to righteousness. There are times when we humans think we can can do this all by ourselves, that we have the power and the strength and the smarts to overcome everything on our own. But that is darkness. Light is when we accept that we need God's help and the assistance of God's other creations to make the world a better place. Darkness always falls short when tested against the force of goodness. This love that is greater than all things and this love that has already saved us and is calling us to bring heavenly justice to the world where darkness is giving way to light. In Jesus, Jesus is the light of the world And it is much more obvious to those who have walked in dark places, as Isaiah prophesied, 
so long ago. And 2020 has certainly given us some experience. The pandemic and wildfires and racial injustice and attempts to overturn our election have been dark times. We have lived in deep darkness, and, and yet God's light shines on us. And we know that light wins. Christmas has always touched a feeling inside of me. It's a feeling of, of warmth and love. And this feeling comes from the smells and the tastes, the sights of twinkling lights, the sounds of beautiful music, and the warmth of heaters and fires, and the time with family. Although it was decades ago, I, I still recall the anticipation of my childhood for this special day and the ritual gatherings with my parents and grandparents, my aunts and uncles and my cousins. From the Christmas Eve dinner that we shared together, and then the very late Christmas Eve service, it was the latest time I was up throughout the entire year, and then gathering with our closest relatives on Christmas Day when we put on our best casual clothes, which for me always included a scratchy sweater, and we just imbibed the spirit of the day. That was Christmas, and it was amazing. Now, those traditions haven't been the same for me for some time. My, my cousins have moved around the world, and the gatherings of years ago are, are no longer held. And I'm a priest, so I have some commitments on this annual feast of the Nativity. But the traditions in new places continue to define Christmas. And I always try to find moments that rekindle that spirit from so long ago. Many of the traditions of holidays have, have changed this year. Easter services were recorded on Zoom. No July 4th parade through the Palisades. No, much smaller Thanksgiving gatherings. Very little travel. Fewer opportunities to serve our neighbors in person. And now Christmas? Instead of gathering in the darkened church or in the great hall around the fireplace, instead of hearing the organ and the brass quintet and the voices of our choir share the spirit of this day live and in person, we are gathered in our homes, making sure to do everything we can to keep each other safe while experiencing the rekindling of Christmas light. Last year at this time, no one imagined this. On most Christmases, we, we know what to expect. We actually aim to relive the feelings from the past, to, to gather that nostalgia, like what I remember from my childhood. This year, Christmas is different. This year, we're experiencing something new. We might even be surprised. And if so, we might feel like the shepherds did. They were minding their own business, watching their sheep, when the angels interrupted them to proclaim great joy and wonder. The angels said to them, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. The angels told the shepherds to drop everything, to go to the child in Bethlehem. Jesus, the light of the world, the Savior was born, and Jesus was there to make all things new. And the shepherds did exactly that. I believe that being surprised, being interrupted by God is not a bad thing. It is maybe what we need in our lives, to see that God is with us in a way that we could not see before. God is there in all those things that distract us, our chores and our health problems and our work stresses and our busyness. God is there when we are haunted by injustice, and God is there even in pandemics. God is there. Our lives may be too cluttered to notice. We, we might be creeping around in the darkness. But in moments of interruption, when the angels call out to us, when we open our eyes to the love that exists around us, when we are amazed by hope and joy, when we glimpse God's mission transforming us in new ways, that that is when having lived through darkness gives us a new perspective on life and light and love. 
and God. Jennifer and I are celebrating our first Christmas as parents this year. In many ways, Esther is our angel, and her call interrupts us and calls us to be filled with hope and joy. Esther stretches out our vision longer than just today. Esther extends our vision for a generation. We are called to, by that angel to pass on the light of God through her out into the world. So a question to ask this Christmas is who is your angel? Who will interrupt you? Who will point you toward the love of God? It's there on this Christmas and always, every day. Light, as Isaiah said, shines on you. So on this Christmas, celebrate the light and allow it to win victory over the darkness of our world. That is the Christmas hope and joy and peace and love. Amen. And so, friends, let us affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, upon being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and historic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. we join the angels and celebrate with joy the birth of the Son of God, let us offer our prayers to God who gives new birth to sons and daughters in every place. By the birth of the timeless Son of God, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, we pray. Michael, our presiding bishop, Marianne, our bishop, and for all who minister in Christ and for all the holy people of God, we pray.
believers who put their trust in the incarnate Son of God, we pray. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority, and for peace and justice, we pray. For travellers, for the sick and the suffering, especially Marilyn Mix, Elizabeth Jessup, Harry Teeter, Jean-Luc Principal, Ron Klingingbird, Paul Geffert, Elizabeth Wagner, David Beers, Sherry Borg, Mary Grace Corey, Eleanor Hickey, and Claudia Hill. For the hungry and the oppressed, for those in prison, and for the dying and the dead, we pray. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife and need, we pray. those who celebrate birthdays this week, especially Virginia Hurt, Stephen Teplitz, Harry Teeter, Jean-Luc Princeville, and Joe White, that they might grow in wisdom and grace, we pray. Let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ by praying for our own needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. source of light and gladness. Accept the prayers we offer on this joyful feast. May we grow in Jesus Christ who unites our lives to yours and who is Lord for all eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Well, welcome to St. Patrick's. If this is your first time at St. Patrick's, Merry Christmas to you, and I encourage you to sign up for our newsletter on our website. A special thank you to the Cantorus Choir and our guest instrumentalists for today's music. Now, we welcome you to this celebration of Christmas. We are collecting canned goods and toiletries for our partners at Salvation Army's Great, Pro Great Patrol. The bins for this collection are in the St. Patrick's outdoor courtyard throughout the Christmas season. Also outside, we have a prayer tree. Please stop by at your convenience to write your prayer on an available ornament and place it on the tree. 
The prayers on the tree will be blessed during the service on January the 3rd. Now, St. Patrick's is a donation-based institution. We rely on your generosity to continue sharing God's light in our community. We would usually pass a plate, but we can't do that today. If you feel called to give an offering, please do so on our website, stpatrickschurchdc.org. Again, Merry Christmas to you from St. Patrick's. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Communion is the sacrament that unites us in God's common mission. We need each other.
to live out God's vision, and that is why we gather as a church. We will not be distributing communion in the traditional way. You can consume consecrated wafers that you picked up in previous Sundays at this time. We will again have consecrated communion wafers for you to collect this Sunday in the courtyard after the 10 a.m. service. But for now, please light your candles as we sing together Silent Night. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.